This video is part of the Commercial Building Electrical Design Series. Uh, we're continuing our discussions on lighting design and looking at different lighting sources. And so this video will begin uh, our look at what we call HID lighting or high intensity discharge. Again, taking a quick uh, inventory of where we are, we've gone through lighting terms and definitions, and, and again, we're walking through the sources. So uh, here we're in high intensity discharge mercury vapor. So let's talk about high intensity discharge uh, in general. This is a, a type of lighting that uses electrical gas discharge uh, method, and it's proven to be you know, pretty highly efficient, relatively and effective. Uh, it is comparable to fluorescent lighting due to its efficient form of lighting. Uh, there are some design issues that uh, we do need to be aware of with this type of lighting uh, that we will take a look at. But uh, there are uh, a few different types of HID lighting that we want to examine. First, just looking at the general theory uh, with HID lighting, you know, we have a tube filled with a gas vapor that we excite by striking an electric arc through at a very high frequency. Again, this is done with the ballast, much like with uh, a fluorescent light. So once the arc is started, it heats up and evaporates the metal salts, forming a plasma. It creates a high-intensity ultraviolet light. Again, we can't see this high-intensity uh, UV light. So the tube then would be coated, either the tube or the bulb would be coated with a phosphor coating that's made to glow by this ultraviolet light. And again, this is what we see as the light from these types of fixtures. There are different types of HID lamps that utilize different materials as their source, and we'll take a look at each of these as we move forward. Uh, at the end of their life, these types of lights uh, have a tendency to cycle, and oftentimes the bulbs have a violent death, so you know, care should be taken when you use these types. If you can get a, a glass lens or something, that's probably a good idea, especially for the recess can type that sometimes you're using canopies because when they do uh, die, a lot of times the bulb will bust itself and could make a mess or could be hazardous. Um, this is also the type of lamps that are often used in automobile headlights or a form of this type of lamp. HID lighting is still a widely used uh, exterior lighting source in commercial applications, but it does have some issues that the designer should be aware of and take into account when specifying this type of lighting. Um, we'll look at several different types of HID lamps, starting with the mercury vapor type lamp, which was one of the very first types of HID lamps produced. The rarely specified new construction today, you will run into this type of lighting in existing facilities, so I think it's a good idea that you are aware of it. Um, with mercury vapor, you know, of all the HID type lamps, we're going to look at in this course, mercury vapor is the least efficient, though still better than incandescent. Uh, mercury vapor type lamps have an efficacy that is comparable to fluorescent type lamps, which is considered fair. So uh, we usually see these in the range of 50 to 60 uh, lumens per watt. As with fluorescent lighting, mercury <clears throat> vapor lighting has a good expected lamp life. Uh, this being the case, mercury vapor lamps are usually considered to be in the category of high lamp life, so we could see these go anywhere from 20 to 25,000 hours of use. Mercury vapor fixtures will typically experience some significant depreciation from all the factors contributing to light loss factor, including ballast factor, uh, dirt depreciation, those types of things. Typical LLF for this type of luminaire is, uh, in a typical commercial environment, around 50 to 60 percent, which isn't great. But uh, you know, so we need to take that into account if you if you do, for some reason, choose to try to think about using these. The spectral power distribution for mercury vapor fixtures can vary, but it's typically relatively good in that there is decent coverage in the green, yellow, blue, and red spectrums. These types of fixtures generally provide a good spectrum for most exterior commercial applications and uses. It should be noted that because of the way these fixtures operate, there is an element of UV light that can leak from the bulb. So again, you don't want to use these when there's any textiles or art involved. So here you can see in this spectrum, uh, do have pretty much some representation in almost all the color bands. Maybe light blue is a little, a little off, but uh, and in this, this part of the red spectrum, but for the most part, it's pretty good coverage. Uh, 
just as before, and this is going to be the case pretty much for all lights, uh, there, there are many factors involved in determining the coefficient of utilization for a fixture in a given situation. Uh, again, where some of the factors are luminaire and some are not. Uh, the elements of lumen are involved in this calculation for these types of sources are generally considered to be good. Other, uh, other issues of interest related to different sources are that of control, warm-up, restart, dimming, etc. Due to the need to strike an arc, there are issues involved with starting these types of fixtures, especially in cold weather. It can sometimes require 10 minutes to warm up from cold or hot starts going from blue to white light. So these types of fixtures are typically not dimmable. HID lighting is generally considered an acceptable option for most exterior commercial applications that is a slightly more economical choice compared to other HID types of lighting in terms of initial cost. That being said, there are some constraints that the designer needs to be aware of, such as low temperature applications. Uh, these types of fixtures are still commonly used in street light applications, so you will see them uh, in roadway lighting utilized for that.